Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am sitting here super early in the morning before, oh, well, before 6.30 and was going to get ready and I thought, you know what? I should just film it because I am using quite a few new products to my collection. And this time, most of them are newer to the market. A lot of times I do these videos and I'm like, well, they're, it's just new to me, which I still think is fun. But this includes... A couple of things I got from the Sephora sale, just newer. Okay, so let's jump in, shall we? It's really early. <laughs> I did go ahead and correct my under eyes because it takes them, I don't know, maybe an hour or so to look semi-normal after I wake up. So I thought I would spare y'all the intense darkness, but I did use my Fit Glow Corrector in Peach. For foundation, I'm gonna be using the new YSL All Hours Foundation. Now, this is not a totally new concept. This is a reformulation, to my knowledge, of the original All Hours Foundation that came out a few years ago. I remember trying it and it was okay. It wasn't my favorite by any means. But this they changed to a luminous matte foundation where from memory, the original was just a very matte foundation. Now, luminous matte is a little bit of an oxymoron. And sometimes I feel like brands might use that combination of words as a way to market to everyone. <laughs> but when you look at the copy on like Sephora's website, it does still claim to be a matte finish. It says it's for every skin type. It does have SPF 30 in it, which is comprised of octanoxate and titanium dioxide. There is no possible way that anyone would ever intentionally put enough foundation on their face to get the actual coverage that the SPF rating states. So I never, ever, ever, ever <laughs> rely on a makeup product to give me my sun coverage. So I do have my ISDN SPF on right now. And their highlighted ingredients are hyaluronic acid, jasmine petal, which is supposedly, supposedly supposed to brighten, and vegetal taurine, which is known for nourishing properties. Let's go ahead and get started applying it. I am in the shade MN6. It is a very liquidy, runny foundation, which I feel like the first one was too. It's been too long. This looks a little dark when I first apply it, but it ends up working out especially in the months where you can actually see like my arms and stuff and my self tan, tan, but it wasn't dark enough to me to warrant like returning it and getting something else. I just, I make it work. This claims to be transfer proof. I think it says waterproof. Yeah, waterproof and heat resistant. It says that it feels bare on the skin, so super lightweight, you're not gonna be able to find it. And it's also one that claims that after two weeks of constant wear, your skin is going to improve. I've never, I'm not gonna say never, but in the past, I don't know, eight or nine years, I don't know that I have used a foundation for two weeks to be able to see any kind of benefit from it. So I will not be able to speak to that point. I'm just, speaking to the makeup side of it. So this is with the foundation and this is without. So definitely not any more luminous, but it did still keep some facets of radiance that my skin had before I applied the foundation. So while I don't necessarily agree with the term luminous matte, to me, it's a little more of a natural matte, meaning it's not gonna be super flat or drying looking, but it's also not going to provide added luminosity to the skin. I used two pumps. I had a little bit left over, so I do feel like a little bit goes a long way because that was for my face and my neck. This does claim to be full coverage. I think that you could probably get it there, but I would say it's more of like the medium to full coverage on first application. I'm gonna be using the Kulfi concealer that I purchased during the Sephora sale as well. Now this claims to be a hydrating self-setting concealer. I'm gonna tell you, I have not tested that, I cannot, I I just, I can't not set my concealer, y'all. I just can't. I'm just not at that point. It moves everywhere. I haven't found one that's quite self-self-setting yet. And I just haven't tested that part. Sorry, <laughs> this is the BK Beauty 109. But I do feel like it's very good coverage. It is a, like a clean at Sephora product, if that is important to you. And it has like a lot of 
fruit extracts and stuff that they say is gonna help smooth the skin. Again, I don't look for my makeup to provide skincare. It doesn't hurt having it in there as long as it's not something you are allergic to. I know a lot of times the more natural ingredients things have in them, the more skincare ingredients, the more extracts, the more chances someone might have some kind of reaction to it. So always be sure to check your ingredient list no matter what, but especially if it is having a lot of skincare claims to it. The claim is medium coverage, which I feel like is, is pretty spot on. Sometimes I use it and I feel like I'm getting pretty full coverage. It is definitely higher than a light. And I can kind of see what they mean with like a radiant finish. But again, that is going to be taken away because I do set my concealer. Is this the Shantikai Future Skins replacement? Absolutely not. I've yet to find that. And it may not even be in my top two after that, but it is a good concealer. It does wear nicely. I don't have any issues with it creasing or cracking, and I do find that it provides good coverage. So definitely one that I'm glad I tried out. And if you're in the market for a new concealer, I would recommend trying it out as well. I was gonna let everything sink in while I did my eyes, but apparently now that I've set my under eyes, let's just go ahead and finish the face and then we'll go on to eyes. For powder, I'm gonna use the Orsay Come Closer Setting Powder that I spoke about in my favorites video last month. I absolutely love this packaging. It has a dome lid, so just tap the powder into that. And I'm gonna be using my La Mer powder brush. It just fits down in that dome so perfectly. But then when I tap the powder off, it stays in the top versus going everywhere. So I really am not wasting product or making a mess. I'm just going to lightly set. I just love this powder, it's so pretty. I mean, obviously you can tell I powdered my skin a little bit just because the finish changed. But when you look up close, and I'll do a close up after this, you'll be able to see it doesn't look like powder on the skin at all. It doesn't get too luminous throughout the day which is important to me because I don't want to have to be touching up. See what I mean? It just doesn't look like powder on the skin. Now we'll say a little bit over here, I'm getting a little patchy with that foundation. If there's anything that I would say is a con on my skin, it is that. I do tend to have some spots that for some reason in some formulas will not have makeup adhere to them. And it seems to be more in the matte formula. I remember the Dior matte, which I felt like looked absolutely gorgeous on the skin. There was one patch right here that absolutely would not take the makeup. So it looked like I didn't finish my face. I ended up returning that one because I just couldn't see any sense of using something that never covered my entire face. And for some reason, it always tends to be like I can, I can barely, barely see it right here. It always tends to be on this side of my face with certain formulations. I'm hoping that by the time I finish everything, it's not gonna be as noticeable, but I do see a little bit of patchiness on that side. For bronzer, I'm gonna use my, I, this is the oldest. I got this one at first launched. I just haven't talked about it yet. But this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Elephant Palette. They came out with Elephant, they came out with Tiger, and a Butterfly. The Elephant, the colors look the best, which I'm not sad about because I absolutely love this packaging. I mean, I think everybody has waxed poetic about the Hourglass packaging this year especially. And these are the colors. So this claims to be, I think, a coral blush. I really kind of think it's more peachy in my opinion. But it has the... Finishing powders of dim light, soft light. The strobe powder is beaming strobe light, lustrous bronze light bronzer, which I believe is new, and then iridescent coral and radiant rose blushes. I'm just gonna use the bronzer right now. I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 107 travel brush. The only thing about these palettes is that you do need to make sure you use a brush that is small enough to actually just pick up the product and not go into anything else. Sometimes it's not an issue if it hits something else in the palette, but the blush is right next to that. And I really don't want a bright coral blush like on my forehead. So just, you know, be mindful of that, especially when you travel. I use these palettes a lot. This one and previous year's palettes when I travel because they really do have everything you need for the face. You just need to make sure that you're bringing, you know, an appropriate size brush. And it's, I mean, y'all, it's hourglass. 
Hourglass powders just work on my face, which is why I know as long as I like the color story, I'm gonna love these palettes and this one is no different. I'm also going to use the highlight that is in this palette, the Beaming Strobe Light. It looks a little darker in the pan than I would probably pick for my skin tone, but it ends up working on the skin because again, Hourglass products just tend to do that for me and it's beaming and it's beautiful and I love it. Now for blush, I am gonna not use the blushes in the palette because I wanted to use my new Gucci blush that I picked up during the sale and this is Rosy Beige. I had a couple of people say they love this blush. I had a couple of people say they love it but they didn't love this color because it did not show up on them. And I can see that it is a very lighter, neutral type blush when it's applied. I don't even know why I'm trying to use that mirror. It's pointless. But it does show up on my skin. So this is with just the bronzer and that's with the blush. It does have that rosy tint to it. I really like it. I like that it's a little lighter upon application because we all know that I have a super heavy hand when it comes to blush and bronzer. So I appreciate a formula that is more buildable than is super uber pigmented. There's a time and a place for both, but I really like this. And I also think it's a beautiful eyeshadow color. It's just that perfect, truly neutral, doesn't matter what you wear with it type of blush. And then to buff my face, I'm gonna go into the two ambient lighting powders. So dim light and soft light. Soft light to my knowledge is a new powder color. I don't know if they've had them in their previous palettes or not, but they don't have it in the individual ones. And I'm just going to buff the face. So I don't know if y'all are gonna be able to see this, but it's kind of the same thing on this side. Right here, it just looks like I don't have makeup on. It is crazy to me, I don't know, it's got to be one specific ingredient within a formula because this is the third foundation that this has done this to me with and it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I'm gonna use my Chantecaille Rose Water just to give a little bit of extra hydration to the skin before we move on to the eyes. So I think everybody and their mom has been talking about this palette, haven't they? This is a last day of the sale purchase for me, the new Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Eyeshadow Palette. I am going to tell you, I'm one of the very few people who did not enjoy the first Master Mattes palette. They were very dry to me. I don't dislike a dry formula. There are benefits to it, but for some reason, a lot of the colors look the same on me. It wasn't necessarily what I was looking for in a color scheme. I was hoping they would be a little bit more neutral. However, they ended up being more on the warmer yellow toned. It just wasn't for me. But when I saw this and saw the tones of the mattes especially, I was like, I, I have to try it. And to me, I have no idea whether he has come out and said differently, but to me, these mattes are a different formula than the master mattes. Maybe I'm not remembering it correctly, I don't know, but I, I much prefer this matte formula. And I'm gonna start off with this really pretty pink color right here on a refer 15. Now there is quite a bit of, of kick up in these mattes, I've said before, that does not bother me at all. They're very smooth and buttery compared to the dryness that I remember from the original. And I know that the mattes aren't really what people are talking about when they talk about this palette. It's the shimmers. Oh, the shimmers are so pretty. Oh, the shimmers are everything that I have been waiting for. The shimmers are shimmery. <laughs> I look, and I'm gonna go ahead and say I have not watched any of his videos that he's done on this. Typically when an artist or a celebrity launches something, I don't tend to before I try it because I wanna form my own opinion. So I don't know if these are meant to be like toppers or actual eyeshadows, but they do have more of a topper feel to me. And they are gorgeous, do not get me wrong. But these four right here, so this row and then this one right here, are pretty chunky in their shimmer and they do provide fallout. I have used it with something tacky underneath. I have used it without something tacky underneath and each time I do get a little bit of fallout. It is not something that makes me have 
a disco ball for a face. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it does have a little bit of fallout. This shade right here is not chunky like that. It still has a little bit of a sheen and it is perfection for an all over smoky eye. Because I remember one day I did this matte shade and then I'm, everything's so backwards in this viewfinder. And then this all over the eye. And then I put a tad bit of whatever highlight I was using kind of in the center of the eye. And it was gorgeous. And these shimmers are gorgeous too. They just are a little chunky. Still very pretty. Now, I received a package from Ciate in the mail just yesterday. And these are their Eye Luster Cream Eyeshadows. And these are very like iridescent colors. I will swatch them for you. Almost duochrome in a couple of them and lots and lots and lots of shine. One of them, which is probably my favorite, it's actually not the one I'm gonna use today, but one of them doesn't have near as much kind of shimmer to it. Let's see what I mean with the duochrome. That's ultraviolet. So it definitely has like a purple shift to it. Then you have ice, which is more of a bright white, a little bit of a shift to that too. Eclectic, which is my favorite. It's that beautiful copper color, which doesn't have near as much shine to it, but I wasn't, wasn't gonna go too warm on the eyes today. So I decided to use this one, which is called Cupid. And it is like a pink gold kind of shift to it, duochrome type of shade. So I've, again, I just got these yesterday. I have no idea how they work, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of Cupid just right on the lid and I'm gonna tap it up to the crease. And this one is coming off more gold than anything on the lid. A little tiny bit of a pink, pinkish purplish reflect. They on, honestly almost give the same effect as the shimmers in the Mario palette, but being in a cream base, I'm just guessing that they wouldn't have much fallout to them. I am gonna use a little bit of one of these colors on top, and I think I'm gonna use this one right here. I was gonna go in with a, the more pinky shade, but this kind of grayish, silvery type taupe shade and I'm just gonna tap that on the top. This is like cooking on my eyes, y'all. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I have no idea what's gonna come of it. But I actually like that. I don't know if you're able to see. I like the contrast that gray gives to the rest. Now, I'm not gonna even make it darker on the outer corner. I am gonna use this darkest shade down in the bottom that has Mario etched into it, which you can hardly see anymore because I use this a lot for eyeliner. And line my eyes. I do already have some glitter on my face which I probably should have expected. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of that pink and mix it in lightly with this brown shade down here to give a little bit more depth to it for the under eye. For mascara, I used my Tower 28, which I'm still loving and liking, but like I had said in previous videos, I do find it definitely needs a primer with it to get the best effect. I did not like it near as much without a primer. So I was just using my L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. Now this lipstick is another add-on for the last day of the sale with the Makeup by Mario palette. And this is from House Labs. And it is a La Monster Lip Crayon 2.0 in light peony matte. Not the first time I have used this. It is a da -da, nude pink. I like the concept of a pointed crayon when you first get it because it helps kind of line the lips and then fill it in. But it's not gonna stay like that forever. There is no built-in sharpener with this. So, you know, the concept is a little short-lived, but I do like the color. Again, nude pink. It is very, very, very matte, very matte. Not mad about that. It is marketed and it's in the name as a matte lip crayon. But I knew I was gonna need some kind of shine, so I'm gonna use my Wayne Goss Tulip just to give me a little bit of gloss. But the actual color lasts quite a long time. I like the color. It's not necessarily comfortable on my lips, but again, I'm not a matte lover when it comes to lipstick, so none of them would be comfortable. It's hard for me to kind of determine whether or not a matte has any sort of comfort on the lips because I just don't like any of them. Very quickly, because I'm done with the makeup look, I have got to talk about a new fragrance that I have, and y'all, this is 
one of the best scents I have ever smelled, and it is $39. Bath and Body Works, coffee and whiskey. Now this is a cologne, so you're not gonna get a lot of wear out of this. I mean, I figure I usually get about two, two and a half hours before I can't really smell it. I do overspray it. Oh my word, oh my word. When I was in store, ugh, I've heard about this for a little bit now since they launched it, but when I was in store, I went and smelled it and it was an immediate, put it in the basket. I wasn't gonna wait for it to go on sale because Bath and Body Works always does sales. I just didn't care. $39, I cannot, even begin. It is Irish whiskey, coffee, and a little bit of vanilla. That is what they claim is in this scent. Chad loves this scent. This lives in my bathroom since I have gotten it the past couple of weeks and I douse myself in it after my shower at night and go to bed in it. It is exactly what it says it is. Whiskey, coffee, little bit of vanilla. It is extremely unisex in my opinion. Some people might say it leans masculine. I just don't think so. You might be new to my fragrance preferences, but <laughs> if it has some kind of liquor note in it, if it is boozy in any way, I immediately want to smell it. Whiskey, rum, cognac, it doesn't matter. Champagne, I've seen champagne as notes in perfume before. I just love those kind of accords. This is, one of the best scents that I have ever smelled, and it is hands down the best affordable scent to get your hands on, in my opinion. They also have body like a body line with a body spray, a lotion, a shower gel. You best believe all that went directly on my Christmas list. I want every single item that smells like this coffee and whiskey. So that is it, hopefully you enjoyed it. I, I really like everything I used. I don't love the fact that the foundation tends to patch on this side, but I feel like at the end it works. I will have everything listed and linked down below per usual. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.